Hey Drone Nerds, Matt here. In this video, we're gonna go through the complete setup process of the Anza Robotics Raptor. From creating an account for the air control app by Aloft, to going through the safety parameters, I'm gonna show you everything you need to get in the air. So let's open up the box for the Anza Robotics Raptor. Now, I will have some video about the Raptor T in here as well that I shot earlier, just so I can show you some of the features of the Raptor T. So when you open the box, you see the drone is here, your remote control unit, you have an RTK top hat, and this is all your charging cables for charging the batteries. Now, currently the battery is actually in the drone, but you have extra spaces here where you can put different batteries as well as a loudspeaker. So we're gonna pull out our remote control. We're gonna pull out the Raptor. And we're gonna to get to the RTK top hat here in a little bit. To unfold the Anzu Raptor, you're going to want to unfold the arms in the front first, followed by the rear arms. Arms in the front first, followed by the rear arms. Next, you have your gimbal cover. Don't turn the drone on while this is still installed. So we're going to remove that. And before we get this set up and flying, I'm just gonna show you a few features about the Anzu Robotics Raptor. You have a charging port back here, so if you just want to charge the battery that's inside the drone, you can use any USB-C. There's a couple of them included in the kit. And to check the battery status, just give it a single touch and it'll show you that it's full. To turn the drone on, you will tap once and hold five seconds, and then you'll see the drone turn on. But we're gonna to wait to do that because we want to have our remote controller on first before we turn on the drone. It's a good practice to open up the props manually. However, if you don't open them up manually, they will open themselves when you go to take off. To remove the SD card, you're gonna open this cover and the SD card is right there. A single push will take it out and that's where all of your data is going to be stored. To remove the battery, give it a pinch on the back here and pull it out. If you wanted to charge this battery, pull out the charging station, pull out the charging brick, and the included USB-C cable. You're going to connect it here, and you're gonna connect it to one of the USB slots. It's gonna have power coming from here. So we would plug that into the wall, and it gives you an opportunity to not only charge the batteries like this, but you can also charge the remote controller with the other USB-C cable. This is the connection for the charging for the USB-C cable on the remote controller. The charger will charge all the batteries in succession. After your batteries are fully charged, you'll see that it's fully charged right here. You can then pull it out of the charging station and put it into the drone like this. Make sure that that covers are always tight. Next, we're going to install the RTK top hat. Now, there's a cover right here that you need to fold over in order to get the top hat installed. You'll see this USB-C connection here and just orient it so that it goes onto the drone. Fasten it down with these two fasteners, not too tight, just finger tight is fine. So now, Let's boot up our remote control and the drone. To turn on the remote controller, press once and then press for five seconds. You'll see the controller boot up. And before we go any further, let's connect to a Wi-Fi connection so we can get the latest Google Maps on this remote. You can also screen record the remote control. And before we get to the Wi-Fi setup, I wanna get that going so I can show you what it looks like on the remote controller. So right here, you'll see screen record. It's probably kinda of hard to see given the sun. And when you hear that noise, you know it's recording. So now we're gonna record everything that's on the actual display. So next, let's get ourselves a Wi-Fi connection. So here, I've got my iPhone on a hotspot and it's already connected automatically because I've used this drone in the past and it knows the network. So we're gonna go back. Next, we're gonna power on the Raptor. To power on, one short press and then one five second long press.
Now, I brought myself a landing pad, and this is a good thing to have in case you ever have to take off in grass, and it keeps the sand and dust out of the motors. You always want to take off with the drone facing away from you, so let me turn that around. Now that the drone is oriented correctly, facing away from me, I have a Wi-Fi connection for Google Maps. Let's go into the Air Control app. Let me show you how to make an account for the Air Control app with Aloft. It's going to ask you for basic information. Make sure you use a valid email address because you're going to receive a code after you put this information in that you'll need to enter into the app. After you've entered your information, tap submit and then go to your email inbox and get this code. Enter in the code and then sign in. On the remote itself, this is your pause button for flight, your return to home button, and your power button. You have three different flight modes here that you can toggle back and forth to get what you want. You also have customization buttons on the bottom that you can assign for your liking. Now when it comes to stick control, this is going to be your elevation. So up, down, and elevation. This is going to be your yaw, yaw to the right clockwise, yaw to the left counterclockwise, and this is gonna be your pitch control. Pitch yourself forward to go forward, pitch yourself back to go reverse, to the right and to the left. Mixing all these controls is going to get you smooth flight. You also have a record button here. When you're ready to go fly, you can see our Google Maps has updated. I know exactly where I am and I can zoom in. When you're ready to go fly, click fly. Next, it's gonna take me through a pre-flight checklist. This is very important in order to make sure you ensure safety with your drone program. It's going to give me a risk level score for my flight. The higher the score, the more risk. Now, let's go through some safety parameters. The three parameters you will probably adjust for each flight is the return to home altitude, which is going to set the elevation of the drone in case it needs to return to home. You need to make sure that you will clear every obstacle in your vicinity. The max altitude, and as you can see here, we entered an altitude over 400 feet, so it gave us an alert to make sure that we're not flying over 400 feet, which is the drone elevation ceiling. You can also toggle on or off a distance limit and then set that distance limit to your desired value. So now we can see our camera view as well as our map view. When I'm ready to take off, there's a take off button here on the display or you can take both sticks and put them down to the center. When you give it some elevation, the drone will go up. Next, I'll show you how to change from the wide camera to the zoom camera. To change from the wide camera to the zoom camera, just tap zoom on the display. You can also zoom in with the plus sign and zoom out with the minus sign. So I don't have a Raptor T with me today, but I recorded some video earlier showing you how to change the color palette as well as the temperature sensitivity. When using the thermal payload on the Raptor T, you can change the color palettes here. There's white hot, black hot, tint, medical, rainbow one, iron red, arctic, bulgarite, hot iron, and rainbow two. You can also change the sensitivity by clicking mode next to the palette selection bar. Next, I'll show you how to take pictures and record video. You can switch from picture to video mode by tapping on the icon here. Press record to start recording, press again to stop recording. When in camera mode, tap the white circle to take a photo. And now I'll show you how to format the SD card inside the drone. Just under the record button, this icon brings you to your camera settings. And this is where you can format your SD card. Now, if I wanted to bring it back down for a landing, 
there is a landing button on the display, or you can just bring the elevation all the way down. And that's how to successfully take off and land. So one thing to add, when the drone's in flight and you experience any type of emergency, you can always hit the return to home button and the drone will land where it took off. So we're going to take off again, and this time I'm gonna use the takeoff feature on the display. Slide to take off. Okay, so we've got the Raptor in the air. Let me show you the control sticks and what they do. You've got elevation up, you'll see the drone climb in altitude. You can also bring it down, it'll descend in altitude. So up increases your altitude, down decreases your altitude. You can also yaw left and right. If you push to the right, the drone will spin clockwise. If you push to the left, the drone will spin counterclockwise. Watch that. So that's one full circle, yawing right, going clockwise. Now it's, I'm pushing it to the left, and you get one full circle, yawing left, counterclockwise. It's a good idea to always have the drone facing away from you. That way you don't lose orientation that left is right, right is left, because it's spun around facing the wrong direction. If I'd like to move forward, I push the control stick up, which moves the drone forward. Now, once you let go, it's going to hover in place wherever you set it. Not gonna continue flying forward. You can bring it back by pushing down. And you can see the drone comes back to me. You can also go right. And you can go left. So when I'm ready to come home, I'm just going to bring the drone back. I'm gonna stop it short. And I'm going to lower the elevation until it lands on the ground. And that's all there is to it. You've now completed your first flight with the Anza Robotics Raptor. Once my flight mission is done and I'm ready to power down the drone, pick up the drone, Press the button once, press it again, and hold until the drone turns off. The drone's turned off. Now I can turn off the remote controller. Tap once and hold five seconds, just like the drone. Next, we're gonna fold the arms up the exact opposite way that I showed you coming out of the box. The backs are gonna go first, followed by the front. Backs first then the front. Now we need our gimbal cover. Let me grab that from the case. So the gimbal cover goes on just like it came off. It should hook on the top first and there's a latch on the underside to keep it in place. Now it's ready to go back in the box. So I hope this video explained in detail how to set up the Anzo Robotics Raptor as well as how to get yourself in the air. If you have any questions, you can put those down in the comments. Also be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. My name is Matt. Happy flying.